that are affecting me Rising crime, poverty, issues in my own country But today we're talking about it Yes, we're gonna talk about it Ain't nobody wants to open their mouth But we don't speak out at the Youth Zone Searching for solutions for the issues in our nation That's the only way we know that we can make it It's going down At the Youth Zone We may be young but we're the next generation And we're here to save our nation everyone welcome to the youth zone well we all know the bahamas's main industry is tourism we also know that a robust tourism sector means lots of good jobs the reality is most of what we have seen as major developments in our country are because of foreign investors but is there a price to pay taking it a step further the bahamas also has a policy where foreign investors spending over a million dollars can be eligible for permanent residency and while that policy is shared around the region are we a nation for sale do foreigners have more rights in our own country? Or is it okay because of the jobs they provide? Those are some deep questions, Tell me about it. <laughs> But it causes you to pause and think. Is foreign investment a problem or is it the best foundation for an economy to be built on? After all, they do provide much needed capital that helps our economy to be sound and strong. You're very correct on that. Right. Recently, we've seen what happens when foreign investors clash and how it affects a nation. But both of you have some very interesting points. On today's show, we talk about foreign investors. Are they good or are they bad? That's right. Our discussion begins when we come right back. <laughs> Foreign investors bring in a lot of income because if I have a dollar and I hand that dollar to Xavier and we hand that back and forth, that's not bringing in any income. We need somebody else to bring in some other money. Very true. They just only check for the foreign investors. They're, when they come to invest, I don't think we're even considered. We're not considered. We're ignored. You have to understand foreign investors are business people and you invest in something and you don't have no return. What, what are you going to do? You're going to pull out. You're going to leave. At the youth zone. We may be young, but we're the next generation. And we're here to save our nation. We're here to save our nation. Oh, oh. At the youth zone. You are now. So we're talking about foreign investors. Are they good or bad for our country? So what's your view? How do you feel about them? Well, our social media correspondent Xavier Knowles has this week's responses. Thanks, guys. We're always excited to hear from you on our topic of the week. And boy, didn't we get some interesting responses. Take a look. Although many may hold the view that foreign investors are nothing more than a bunch of evil businessmen sought to buy out our country, they actually play a very important role. They diversify the way the Bahamian people think. This leads to new and innovative ideas that would surely get the same job done in a more productive and efficient manner. I believe that foreign investors are bad for the Bahamas because they're not bringing anything to us and that if they keep on buying everything, they will leave nothing for the Bahamian people. So we want to hear from you. Stay tuned to our social media sites on Twitter at YouthZone242, Instagram at the YouthZone242, and on Snapchat, the YouthZone. And don't forget our Facebook page, the YouthZone. View our question of the week and send us a 20-second video of your opinion. That's our social media report for the week. Back to you guys. Well, it's time to turn up the heat. They're the life of the party and the views with all the views. We're talking about our TYZ panel. Hey, welcome back another week, guys. How y'all doing? Uh, yeah. Okay. So let's talk about this issue. You know, we've been talking about this a lot in our discussions about foreign investors. We've been seeing what's been playing out recently uh, in the media. What say you about foreign investors? Are they good for the Bahamas? Are they bad? What's your view on it? Well, my view is while it is good, there are a lot of things that are overlooked when it comes to foreign investments. Okay. For example, the banking or the financial service arena. Mm -hmm. What if they decide to just pull out 
Right. Which when is the, yeah, which is which which some of them are, some of them are now outsourcing right. like Scotia Bank, which right. closed down several of their branches, like RBC, which closed right. down several of their branches because they are out they are outsourcing. So what would happen if they decided to do that again? True. That's more jobs. That's more unemployment. There's more persons going to NIB to sign up for the unemployment on the unemployment line trying to gain contribution. But do, is, does it balance out though? I mean, while you may have some ch incidences like that where people lose jobs, yeah. aren't they providing more jobs than are, than are being taken away? Uh, so how do, you, how do you balance that? How do you balance that? Well, my thing is right. They're, I don't see them providing more jobs than they're taking away. You don't think so? If they're taking the jobs away, because if you're firing persons and then they're go and they're signing up for the unemployment, how is how is how is it going to offset one another? Like, what are the unemployed going to do for a job? Because they're well, not working. Well, you don't think it's better to be unemployed than never employed? Uh, I mean, if 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 what? These, if what what I, what I mean by that is that at some point, you, yes, this is, let's say it happens and the company closes down and you lose a job, mm -hmm. but wouldn't it have been a, still a benefit to have had a job than not have a job at all? Well, that's because true. Because there's just nobody providing jobs, and there, and local uh, and local businesses aren't providing enough for people to work. So. Don't you think they still provide a benefit? I'm just putting it out there. I'm not saying, you know, you're wrong. I'm just putting it out there. I'm not disagreeing that they, that they do not provide a benefit. I'm just saying that because we heavily rely on them, mm -hmm. that right. alliance okay. is, is going to pose a problem eventually. Point taken. Point taken. Shanae, so you have the mic. Well, Go I ahead. don't think we're too heavily reliant on them because as tourism is our primary industry, we can't only rely on tourism. Foreign investors bring in a lot of income because if I have a dollar and I hand that dollar to Xavier and we hand that back and forth, that's not bringing in any income. We need somebody else to bring in some other money. Very true. Mm -hmm. Very true. Good point. I think foreign investors are good in the first place, right, because they're the reason we've gotten this far. A exactly. good contribution we've gotten this far. But I think we need investors to go ahead and invest in the things that are lacking. For example, Bahamas Air. I think we need someone to go there and just take the, com the company and lead to innovative future because why the government wants to invest inside tourism and to, and to give reason to give people a reason to come here right mm -hmm. but they're not investing in a way for people to come here and so Good we point. can go ahead and invest in bombers saying hey let's yeah, go reach to well. new york let's go reach to europe let's go reach to australia someplace like that so i think we need investors more investors in our front that's a good idea. I think we're too heavily dependent depending um depending on foreign investors because you have to understand foreign investors are business people and you invest in something and you don't have no return, what, what are you going to do? You're going to pull out. Yeah. You're going to leave. So we, 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 we allow these foreign investors to come to our country, invest in something. Um, if they realize that they're not getting any returns, they're going to just leave us in shambles, um, cut jobs, pick up and pack up and go. You, we see it over the, around the world all the time. So I think we need to move away from... Um, allowing foreign investors to come into our country, and we, have, we need to invest in our own. Our, our own people need to invest in ourselves, uh, come up with businesses um, that can take us from being a third world um, co um, country um, into a first world country. So we must be more industrialized in a sense. Do you think that government is more willing to negotiate and assist with foreign investors than its own local people? Yes, why? because they well, have the money. <laughs> well, that's the thing. They have the money. <laughs> yeah. um, so wouldn't you do want to do business with somebody who have the money? I agreed, agreed. But my thing is, and what Xavier is trying to point out, is that, like for me, how, w w let's talk about domestic investment. Mm -hmm. How about foreigners come, like foreign investments, how about they invest in the local Business. Like the local businesses that we have here already. What about those? My thing is they just come here, they establish their yeah, own. And like what my co-panelist was saying, the money does circulate, but that money doesn't circulate inside the economy for uh, indefinitely. It eventually leaves. But remember now, what's the, the main reason why a, a person comes to your country is to do what? Didn't they come in just to have fun? No. Well, no. You didn't they come in because they care so much about those people no. in the Bahamas? Well, no. They come in to make money. Well, that's where the, that's where, that's where the so, government comes so, in. That's where the government comes in and look out for its bohemians, its bohemian citizens. Look out for us. I don't think that they're doing that because, because I just don't, oh my God. I don't think that. I don't want to go there and make this political. But my thing is, they, they just only check for the foreign investors. Right. That's my thing when they come to invest, 
I don't think we're even considered. No. We're not considered. Exactly. We're ignored. Even, e even, even domestic investment, you have a lot of young behemoths out there with good ideas. How about these foreign investors invest inside education? How about our government take their money and pour it inside education? Because who's going to do that? Who's going to give you money just pour into somebody else's country? At the end of the day, while that may be a key component of what you will find out of when they make these heads of agreements, mm -hmm. they put in a part of the heads of agreement that you must give back to the community. But these investors are coming to make money. That's the bottom line. They want to make money. And so you can't tell them you to invest into our people, into our things, and forget about you. You. It has to be some kind of uh, balance okay, uh, that percentage. you get back in return. But I think a lot of times what we see happening is uh, we see a lot of times we end up getting the buy end of the deal mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And a lot of times that happens to do with negotiations and bad deals to fall through. Exactly. We're going to go into another area and that we're going to talk about it when we come back. Stay close here in the youth zone. Um, if you look at Bahama right now, a foreign investor, they came in, um, they tried to, to bring forth this dream, and now it's a, it's a sitting elephant in Cable Beach. As you passed, you're, all you're going to see is <laughs> The future of our country is at stake, and unless we begin to do something about it, we will always need foreigners to come into our country and invest to keep us employed. Um, if you look at Bahama right now, a foreign investor, they came in, um, they tried to, to bring forth this dream, and now it's a, it's a sitting elephant in Cable Beach. Well, uh, most of our people have to, have to depend on what some foreign investor with high education coming. We need more behemoths, PhDs in different fields like medicine, engineering, lawyers, that kind of stuff. To come here and build a country that way. Instead of hiring China construction company or a US construction company to build stuff for us, we get our behemoths who have PhDs in most fields that we require to do it for us. But we don't speak out at the youth zone. Searching for solutions for the issues in our nation That's the only way we know that we can make it It's going down Welcome back, and if you're just joining us, we're talking about foreign investors, and are they good or bad? So what say you guys on our rights as behemoths? Well, personally, I believe that foreign investors, they came into the country, if you've looked into the news recently, mm -hmm. they came in the country and they, they really, it caused a lot of uproar for three major issues. Um, if you look at the situation at Cabbage Beach, this is all because of foreign investors and, and property and allowing Bahamians to uh, have access to the beach. Um, if you look at um, what's happening in Life of Key right now, it, it, it tied Bahamians into this whole mix of um, corruption and our government. Um, if you look at Bahama right now, a foreign investor, they came in, um, they tried to, to bring forth this dream, and now it's a, it's a sitting elephant in Cable Beach and nothing is happening to it. It's an eyesore. So right now, I think that foreign inv investors are really bad because the things that have been happening in the uh, past few weeks. Totally agree. So, because my thing is, if you were to take a drive around in Nassau and ask yourself, what, what do I own? 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 As you passed, you, all you're going to see is <laughs> the Chinese, the Chinese, the Hilton, Bahama, Bahama, wow. <laughs> and now this new development that is coming on stream in like what, 2017, the, what, the port? The point. The point. The Chinese again. So it's like, it's like you, you really, really have to think and ask yourself. What I, do I own in this country? What belongs to me? Okay. I think our slogan, I think the government slogan was to believe in the Bahamas, but stay away from Bahamians <laughs> in the first place. That was, <laughs> that was the slogan wow. initially. Because wow. the way I see it, right? The way I see it is that, look here, B Bay Street did not get to the Chinese. We could have gone to Life Vicky. We could have gone to South Ocean, to all those rich states, Albany and CSA. Do you guys want it? And if, if they don't want it, then fine, send an investor because nobody wants it. But give for him the choice. Those who have the money, those who went ahead and broke their box to go ahead, 
get money, get something started, and come back here and invest in us. Give them a chance to own something here. Do you think Bahamians, let me ask this quick question to you, do you think Bahamians are doing what they need to do to be able to have that kind of capital to begin to invest? Or do you believe that many Bahamians just want to be able to get qualified, to be able to get a good job working for somebody? How many Bahamians really honestly say, I want to have my own business and save money? Or do you find that a lot of people are just saying, I'm going to school to get a good degree to be able to make some top dollars in somebody firm. I mean, I think our mentality has led to where we see today. If we look at our, our, our forefathers and our, our relatives, a lot of them got, they, they spent 20, 25 years working in the hotel industry. They were happy just working for somebody. Yeah. And most of them didn't go out on a limb and say, mm -hmm. let me start a business. I think we, we are to blame for our own situation in our country today because we became satisfied just working for somebody. I mean, if you go to school, it, I, I, don't, I can't tell you the amount of schools that I've spoken to. They're senior students. And you ask them, what do you want to do? And everybody, oh, I want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, a nurse, a teacher, or this or that. No one says, I want to have my own business. Because that's not a quick fix, a quick money-making thing to people. Sure. They want to work for somebody. And I think we've ch we, our mentality has to change as Bahamians if we want to begin to own things in our country. We've got to begin to have a mindset of entrepreneurship. I think the word stands back to education, because why? The government wants to invest inside tourism, but they don't want to invest inside COB, our only developing co college, soon to be university, if that happens. So my thing is, right, most, most payment people who want to do that, who have that mentality, can end up going off and end up get, staying over there, because why? They realize, you know what, why come back? Why get invest in this country Make if they don't invest in their own self? Mm -hmm. So let me stay here and invest inside a first world nation that's already going, like Canada and the USA, mm -hmm. and let's stay here and not come back at all. And I can see what's saying, what, what happened to the Bahamas a couple of years from now, but they still never come back. And uh, they tell their children the same thing, go off, don't come back. And totally. guess what? So all the people we need to come here and help us never come back. Wow. I totally agree. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, because I read a book where he says that, because I, I totally agree with what he says, it all stems with education. Even inside the schools, we are trained to think for someone else. We're not trained to think for ourselves. We're not trained to think like business people, businessmen, businesswomen. We're all trained, we're, we're all educated to believe that, oh, we should just get a good education, we should just get our degree, and then we should just go and work for somebody. Yeah, yeah, That's true. how it it's is. True. We're not trained to say, how about you, you, you get a good, you invest in yourself, you get a good education, and you start your own business. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. But we're not, because when I read his book, I was like so like fl flabbergasted. It's I couldn't mentality. believe like what he was saying was actually true because I pictured myself back in school and I'm like, wow, he is so correct. We're not training our nations to be it's business true. people. And, and we, what we are doing really is making our people enslaved to the, to, to, to the people that run our country. And I'm talking about any party or politics. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying simply, we feel as if I can keep you dependent on me, I can, always, depend, I can always expect you to have to need me yeah. to come through for you. If this country had a, a, a mindset of entrepreneurship, then nobody needs you to get, to get them no job to get their vote. You see what I'm saying? We have to change the mentality, and it begins with us telling our young people now in school, you don't need to work for nobody. Mm -hmm. You have enough skills to run your own company, your own industry, that you, people can't come to you and talk politics to you mm -hmm. to get your vote. Because you're an independent thinker. When you have an independent thinker, when you, when you employ people, you have position and power in this country. And you have to understand your rights in this country when you begin to employ people. And that's when you begin to see the cycle changing. I always tell people over and over, we, 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 we get upset with each other, but, but the politicians on both divides, these people continue to look out for each other. Mm -hmm. Who's in power today give their business to the people who ain't in power. Mm -hmm. And when the power switches, they get the people, the people who ain't in power. They stay getting rich mm -hmm. while you continue to work for people. We have to change that mentality and become employers rather than employees. I, th awesome. I think it goes back to education. I feel as though uh, you, there should be a, a business, an introduction to business course in every school. Yeah. And it should be a core subject that every student should take. Because when you look at it, small businesses contribute, I think, about 80% to the revenue of a country. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I, I, I think instead of having all these coursework they're giving you, they should tell you, give me a business plan for your coursework. I I give me a business idea. Right. I, I totally, yeah. totally agree. I totally agree. I and, think and people, people have to realize that when, when you invest, once, once a country invests in human capital development, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. I think our government is afraid to educate its people. I really think that it's afraid. I, it, I think it relies on that 60% of ignorance for the vote. But see, when you, when you understand the way the voter population go in this country, if you see uh, the way our sector is split up, uh, a lot of people vote based on ignorance. Mm -hmm. 
They vote based on a great excitement, a great, a great big party, a great big, a great big good time, and they don't vote on principle and understanding what it means to me. But if I can keep you, if I keep you enslaved, and I can keep you poor in your mentality, then you, then I can just sell you anything and you believe it. But if I, if I empower you and give you knowledge, then you're gonna question what I'm doing, and you will make a serious decision that may affect what it is I'm doing. And I'm just saying it, you know. I, hold on. I realize this. Um. We, we don't invest, like I said, we don't invest in ourselves. If we model after basically uh, Chinese business people who came into this country, if you go down the street, how much John Chase you see? Hey. Because you know why? It's the family came together and they decided to open up a business. But Bahams were too selfish. Yeah. We want to have us, our business and we'll leave our family here. Instead of bringing our family in, let's say all of us put our money in. Pool our resources, yeah. yeah. Yeah, pool your resources, yeah. come together with a, a good business <laughs> yeah. plan and like, execute it. I, you know, for, for life of me, I, you know, for the life of me, I, I, know, I know you all sitting on super value crates, but for life of me, I don't understand. Oh, they are computer <laughs> crates. Oh, they are computer crates. Okay. <laughs> I don't understand yet why, <laughs> why, all of these, why all of these years have passed and we still have one man owning the major food store chains mm. that means you can monopolize and you can put your prices whatever mm. and we, and we, we and you go, whoever walks to the food store everybody grumbling complaining system. but they're still full of the trolley mm -hmm. why don't we pull our resources and let's start our own food our own food chain we have to understand where the power belongs it belongs to you exactly it belongs to you and if we don't get out of that mentality of always working for somebody we will always be enslaved to people and they will always be able to dictate where we go in this country yeah, and we will never yeah. be able to move further and mr watson you know why people vote they vote because they don't have nothing and because the government is threat and whoever yeah, running for them say okay mm -hmm. i could take this from you because guess what i can if you don't vote job. for me it's amazing it's i see elections job. after elections and i hear people talk about oh oh i voting but that's probably no more i voting and they ain't voting for me and then you know when election season comes around and the party is sweet and the t-shirts are nice and they got <laughs> polo t-shirts this season come on uh they order a t-shirt a collar you know and, the hand and, and, and they give you something here, give you something there, and that's snacks. it. You forget that your children still don't have employment. You forget that you, that your road still ain't have a, a, a tar on it. You still ain't got running water, but yet you still cast your vote because you're happy. I mean, we have to get out of that mentality and recognize the future of our country is at stake. And unless we begin to do something about it, we will always need foreigners to come into mm -hmm. our country and invest to keep us employed, mm -hmm. to keep us with a $200 paycheck every week so we can go and buy a little bit of food, a little bit of something from the foreign person who at the food store. You see what I'm saying? We have to get out of that. And I, I, I've been trying to tell Bahamians, when you see these, these foreign investors build these resorts and hotels all over your family of islands where the, some of the most beautiful beaches, mm -hmm. and some of you will never get to experience it because they're building up hotels they around them. Mm -hmm. But when they do that, instead of you saying, let me get a job to go work for them why not let me get a company that i can supply them some things that exactly. they need so that i become a businessman and begin to employ other people in the arena instead you know what we want to go find one job to work for them and all we do is become enslaved to people again we have to learn to become creative and to take risk behaving it's on i take risk mm -hmm. we have to be able to take risk and say i'm going to go out on the limb and see it work. There are so many success stories around the family of islands of people who have taken advantage of these foreign investments on their islands because they recognize that I'm tired of working for somebody. I need now to become a partner to what it is they're investing in my country. But you know, I think it's important to keep in mind that a lot of people can't aspire to be something that they don't think is a possibility. Very true. Ooh, that but loaded. Yeah, that but loaded. That's, <laughs> that, that loaded. is true, but that's where, that's where human capital development comes in because everybody has a part to play inside the economy. We cannot have a nation full of doctors and lawyers because if we do, then who's gonna be my barber? You know, because I, I like who's to look good report? on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I go to the barber shop. But you like gotta believe that becoming so, a barber is a good career. Exactly. See, we, we, we make those careers last resort or something don't work yeah. out. Yeah. But, but those are opportunities but to, you to have make to it big. understand that each occupation has a part to play inside the economy. Oh, yeah. And that's oh, yeah. where the GDP comes in and that's where you're your dollar value grows yeah. and not diminish. Yeah. Because once that once our currency can circulate within itself, mm -hmm. yeah. we, we can become a powerful nation. Very but true. we rely too heavily on outsiders to make us look good well, and put us in debt. Well, look at it. One of the biggest industries we should be investing in, we can defeat ourselves as a country. We keep hearing every government that comes into power talk about we import too much. We import too much of our food. But nobody wants to go in the field and farm and work. We think that's that's a bad job. But it's not that the money is. It's not that just we, right we just we not only import. The, what the irony is, is that we actually manufacture so many things inside our own country, ship them back out, and then we buy, buy it back. back. Yeah. So that don't even make no sense. That's true, Mr. Watson. 
we need more payments for PhDs. Because we always, because guess what? Our, our economy is so uneducated, as in, most of our people have to, have to depend on what? Some foreign investor with higher education to come in. We need more payments for PhDs in different fields like medicine, engineering, lawyers, that kind of stuff to come here and build a country that way. Instead of hiring China construction company or a US construction company to build stuff for us, we get our behemoths who have PhDs in those fields that we require to do it for us. And guess what? The money can stay in the economy and it can build up from the inside. That's how the US became power. That's how the US became power as it is now. Because people they don't invest in that much foreigners more than they invest in themselves. The US the US main industry is industry. That's what they call it. This pure industry. That's why you have so much skyscrapers and Damn, and they always invest in education because while they want their children, they carry on the mantle to keep the U.S. the number one as the number one nation on the planet. And that's how to be in the Bahamas. Make it great again. Well, let's hope. <laughs> <laughs> not the Donald Trump, please. No, let's not discuss him. Let's hope Bahamans get wise up and, and, really, and really realize that the future of our, of our country is in our hands. And it requires us doing something different that we've never done before to get a different result. If you do the same thing over and over, yeah, it's called insanity. Thing. You can get yeah. the same result. We got to be the generation to do something different to see a different result in our country. What y'all say? Yes. All right. All right. Well, we're not out of talk, but we're definitely out of time. So let's continue the discussion on social media at our Facebook page, The Youth Zone, and Twitter page, we're at The Youth Zone 242, or meet us on our interactive chat live at sendusbahamas.com. But don't go anywhere. TYZ News is right after the break. Hey everybody, I'm Jose Etienne. And I'm Shanae Smith, and we're back bringing you not only important, but also popular youth news. The Thief of Love is a stage play sponsored by the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture. And guess what? It's coming to an island near you. Our TYZ reporter Xavier Knowles has that story. The Thief of Love stage play started its nation tour, and the first stop was Freeport, Grand Bahama. The cast and crew of 31 took over the Regency Theatre for two nights to inform and educate Bahamians on issues Haitian Bahamians face every day in our country. The cast and crew also took time to travel and experience the island with a visit to West End. The final night of the show ended with a rendition from the director and writer of the play, Therese Davis Nixon, and a praise break by the cast. Recently, female students from both junior and senior schools gathered at the Golden Gates World Outreach Ministries to be a part of the Daughters of Purpose seminar. The primary purpose of the seminar was to assist them in figuring out their purpose in life, for them to also know the plans of God for their lives and affirm them, and to strengthen their inner being. Among other inspiring guest speakers, Aisha Clark ministered powerfully to them. Here's a clip of what took place. And they wake up and they try to figure out, where are you going? Why am I going through this? God let them know you are here, you was there. When they went through whatever situation that they went through, oh God, I pray right now for healing, protection in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. I thank you right now for peace, peace in the mind in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. We break the plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We cancel the plan of the enemy. We annihilate the plans of the enemy in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God. Father, we thank you for your grace right now upon their lives in the name of Jesus, oh God. We pray that you would cover them each and every one in the name of Jesus, oh God. We declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. The College of the Bahamas' School of Communication and Creative Arts hosted the Foreign Languages Day this year to bring awareness to various languages around the world. Here's more information about this year's celebration. The College of the Bahamas held its annual Foreign Languages Day on campus. The festival, which occurs as a result of the Foreign Languages Department of the School of Communication and Creative Arts, or SCCA, showcases some of the cultures of the world in a cultural show and international food fair. Joanne St. Julian, a participant of the Foreign Language Festival Day, spoke about her contribution to the festival. But my dish or my active participation, I brought in a Creole dish 
which is called spaghetti, but Haitian style like spaghetti. It's regular spaghetti with either hot dog or arasan, a certain type of fish, a different type of dried fish, and like a red tomato sauce. Yeah, so it's, it's kind of cool. You could eat it for breakfast, breakfast, or have it for lunch, dinner, whenever. But usually they serve it for breakfast. I've been here as a spectator before last year, and now I'm here as a participant, and it's, it's interesting already. The aim of the Foreign Languages Day is to promote the various cultures and languages from all over the world. Reporting for TYZ News, I'm Shanae Smith. We also want to hear from you if you have news regarding our phenomenal youth. Well, that, my friends, is the news for this week. I'm Jose Etienne. And I'm Shanae Smith. Please don't touch that remote. Stay, Stay tuned, tuned for my Youth Zone after, after the break. break. Hao, we're back with another exciting season of learning to speak Mandarin. It's only word I know. Our language <laughs> coach Tanya McFall has some new and innovative lessons for us. Hey Tanya, welcome back. Tanya Hao, Hello, Hello everyone, and let's begin. begin. <laughs> All right, so I listened to the conversation, the discussion earlier. Um, tones and just in the front. He's talking about different things that happened in China and the development there. Since 2005, there's been $1.1 trillion worth of foreign investment around the world, including countries as Australia, the Netherlands, Italy, the Bahamas, Cuba, and Pakistan, Spain, the list goes on and on. And so just as they were able to make these developments in these different countries, we should be able to do the same. Last year in 2015, there were 30 countries that gave China contracts. With the minimum, each of those contracts had a minimum of a hundred million dollars. Oh. So, could you imagine if <laughs> we're able to tap into those resources and tap into those markets, we'd be better off? But let's go on. So, let's talk about some of the different industries that we know China that we know China has participated in. Okay, clothes, one of our favorite um, shopping pastimes, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> e foo. Let me hear you. E e -fu. E -fu. Good. E e -fu. E -fu. All right. And let's talk about some of the other things that we know we know from China. Hotels. Food. Food, food is a good one, right? So food, we said sai. Food is sai. So sai is C A I. And the C makes a T S sound like sits. So sai. Sai. Good. Sai. Good. All right. We also know about the hotels. Hotels around the world um, sponsored on. Um, or rather, funded by, by Chinese businesses. Lu Guan. Lu Guan. Lu Guan. Lu Guan. Good. Let's talk about the bank. Yin Hong. Yin Hong. Yin Hong. Yin Hong. All right. And let's talk, we always have Chinese doctors, right? Mm -hmm. So doctors work usually works in clinics or hospitals. hospitals. All right. So hospitals would be Yin Yuan. Yin Yuan. Good. Yin right. So do it again. E U N. E U N. Good. So we talked about the hospital. We talked about the hotel. Who remembers what hotel was? Lu Guan. Lu Guan. Very good. Lu Guan. <laughs> <laughs> and we said clothes was. E Fu. E Fu. Good. Ah. E All right. I was All right. waiting on that one. And who remembers how we say the word food? Sai. Sai. Good. Sai. Good. So food. We talked about the food. We talked about the. Clothing. Hotel. We talked about the clothes, and we oh, talked the about bank. the hospital. Yeah. We talked about the bank. Yes, we did mention food. All right, and schools. We know that the Chinese, the Chinese are big in education. So schools would be shui shao. Shui shao. And an interesting thing about that, it's spelled as X U E X I A O. Shui shao. Okay. Shui shao. Yeah. So we'll go. <laughs> as the time goes on, we'll get more into it. But. That's our lesson for today. Zai Chen. Zai Chen. Well, it's about that time to focus on our encouraging entrepreneurship. We call it Stripes of My Own Business. And this season, we focus on Bahamas Striping Company. Take a look. I realized that I actually had a, a, my first business when I was about 13, 13, 14. 
uh, to whereby, like first I started off cutting the grass in, in, at the church. Then from, from walking the lawn off from my house to the, to the church, like my auntie used to stop go and cut my grass. And, and, and I, I found it to whereby on a weekly basis, I had about uh, five, five different yards I had to cut and I was making about $25 a yard. Uh, where I lived with my uncle, I, I went to BTBI to take up carpentry. I, I, and my, my, my uncle was a plumber. So while I, when I was off from school, I, I worked alongside him with plumbing. And he also, he also did road striping as, as, a, as a side business. And that's where I got uh, my, first, uh, my first taste in striping. I can, I, I can remember it, it was an early Saturday morning, he waked me up, they come home and get a job to do. Went in the back of the yard and he pulled, pulled the canvas off of the small machine. And, and from then I just started asking questions with the machine does. And, and from there, like, driving to the job site, he, me and him was talking about it. And he said that, you know, this is what I want to do. Uh, I want to start, I want to develop a company and, and travel through the Bahamas or, or doing striping. And for some reason that stuck with me. Uh, and after I, 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 I moved to Nassau, I moved to Nassau, I was working in the construction field as a, as a professional carpenter. And, and at that particular time, the, the construction industry took a downturn. So I started to look out, I started to look for other ways to, for to make a living. And that is when I heard about the, the Government Self-Starter Program. Started out uh, with a $5,000 grant from the Government Self-Starter Program, where they was giving young persons between the ages of 18 to 30 up to $5,000 to help them get started in business. Uh, that's, that's, where, that's what got Bahamas striping the, the grant funding. And I would say it put the drive in me to, to want to pursue uh, this particular goal that I have. What we seek to do here in Bahamas striping is, is uh, give the guys some uh, a career, not just a job. Uh, and, and the overall goal is to one day that we have a group of young guys to go there and start their own business, whether it be a franchise in Bahamas striping or, or whatever uh, aspirations that, that they want to do. Uh, we, we train them on, on how to be punctual, how to uh, respect the job, how to, how to, how to do uh, proper time management and, 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 and so forth. So all, all of that helps to develop them as a, as a, as a better individual. Well, yeah, I, would, I would definitely like to uh, congratulate on Bahamas for this uh, initiative. Uh, any, any time where you are trying to uh, birth new entre entrepreneurs within the Bahamian market, I think that, that is definitely an idea that, that should be supported uh, on, on all levels. Uh, definitely, in, when you look at, at, at enhancing the economy, enhancing the, the small business, with the driving force behind any, any economy, I, I, I definitely can uh, congratulate that. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm actually happy to be uh, a, a part of it, uh, at least a spokesperson in the event. Uh, to inspire persons to actually uh, want to own a part of their Bahamas. My name is Otario Metzl and I want you to own a part of your Bahamas. At the Youth Zone, searching for solutions for the issues in our nation. That's the only way we know that we can make it. It's going. school? What sets you apart from the rest? Well, every week we'll find out when we feature a different school. This week we welcome CC Sweeting Senior High School. All right. Yeah. Woo! And no doubt we want to introduce, of course, the, the woman in charge of CC Sweeting, the principal, Mrs. Gray. Thank you for joining us on the show today. Thank you very much. Well, also. you know, we've been having some great times with these, with all of the, our schools, and I couldn't wait for CC Sweeting, especially after that remarkable performance that you yes. did back to back, uh, winning the first ever national basketball championship. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about CC Sweeting. What makes your school stand out from the rest? We stand out from the rest, Mr. Watson, because we are the best. Wow. We are cobras. And Cobra Strike for Excellence. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that one. All right. I know you have a number of organizations in your school that stand out. Tell us a little bit about some of the things in CC Sweeting that stand out. All right, sir. 
In 2012, we were designated by the Department of Education and Ministry of Education as the Career Academy. Mm. And as such, over the past few years, we have been focusing a lot on ensuring that our students are ready for the world of work. Uh, your, your topic today was investment. Your topic today was investment, and I found that very interesting in terms of the discussion with foreign investors. But at CCC Winning Senior, we invest mm. in our students because our focus is on ensuring that they will be able to uh, capture and ensure that they will meet their purpose and their potential. We spend a lot of time on ensuring that they are ready for the job market as well as preparing for college. And um, we have quite a number of persons in the audience, and you see my students behind me. They are ready to share with you some of the highlights of our school. Now today we're not talking basketball. All right. Okay. <laughs> Even though basketball is the major feature right now on most persons' lips, that is going to come with our major uh, event for them on April 8th, the Lord's Willing. But today we wanted to highlight some of the other aspects of our school in terms of investing in our students to move on and become uh, uh, responsible, productive global citizens. Uh -huh. um, and also you talked about having their own businesses. Well, as Career Academy, we also do entrepreneurship. We wow. teach our students entrepreneurship so that those persons who wish to go into uh, the world of work in terms of being employers will be well equipped and skilled to be able to manage their own businesses. Sounds good. Yes. Tell us who you have with us and let's hear from them. Okay. This afternoon we have with us at my left Mrs. Betty Christie, our Vice Principal of Curriculum. <laughs> at my right, Kyle Nottage. And Kyle is representing the Youth Mock Court. Um, the Pan American Development Organization uh, initiated this novel event, and we were the first school to pilot it. Um, and so, Carl is going to speak about that in a few moments. Mm -hmm. uh, Shannon Thompson, one of our prefects, young man who's getting ready for college, he's in grade 12. Behind me, uh, to my right, is Miss Clarissa Moss, our head girl. And she has some extra special things to show to ta tell you about in terms of uh, how she herself has invested in her education wow. um, so that she can get to the next level very quickly. Behind me, Samantha Mark. Well in fact, all of our students here are well-rounded. Samantha uh, is uh, the business student of the year at our school, and she has some other things to share as well. And to my extreme left is Demi Eau Claire. He is the head deputy, sorry, I'm sorry, the head boy of our school. And I want him to share for himself uh, uh, how he came to come to CC Sweeting Senior because we have a feeder school system. But a lot of students do not come to CC. They decide to go elsewhere for other reasons. But Mr. Watson, I want to share, just say this. I, I, I wanted to preface my remarks by saying this show, you and the Ministry of Education are to be commended for partnering um, for this show to give students young people a voice thank you a voice to get them to be thinking critically about these very topical issues that are important to all of us as young people and older more mature persons in this country additionally however this show gives an opportunity for schools to be highlighted and for that we thank you sir thank you because we thank do you. more than sports at our school well, thank, thank you. you thank you very much well let's begin let's hear let's hear what you have to say let's do right miss chrissy we begin with you well as as an administrator for curriculum um deal with uh, the academics of our students and i want to say right here in our audience and sitting in the back of me at least six of our students who are 11 who are 12th graders now in the 11th grade they took bgcse and passed at least four of them with a to c wow all right we have awesome. clarissa in the back and demille at this they did in grade 11. we have um donette we have Brittany, and we have ken and Aya, as well as clarissa those persons there we're a school that is improving We've moved, our A's have improved, our B's have improved. And um, so we see in the market proof that we had, our best subject was geography. We had children who got um, um, A's in math. We didn't have before. We had A's in Spanish. So academically, even though, like Ms. Grace says, they think of CC as a sporting school, we are on a serious academic route to do better and better each year. 
That's for as far as the high school diploma is concerned, we are working with our 10th and 11th graders to ensure that by the time they become the class of 27, 2018, they meet the academic standards for graduation. In our audience, we also have Kadea Wellington, who is our 10th grader who got the highest GPA in our school, 3.83. Stand up for us. Kadea Wellington. Awesome. And I'm really awesome. And, he, and I must specify, he's a young man. He is a young man. The person awesome. who got the second highest GPA was also a male, a 12th grader. And that's the first wow. time he made the principal's list. Mark Sawyer, 3.75. Awesome. Okay? Awesome. But Kadea is one of those that, while at T.A. Thompson, he made a 4.0. Okay, along with another student. So CC Sweeting, academically, we are there. We are letting everyone know so that when they hear about CC Sweeting, everyone say, I want to go there. Awesome. Because we are academically and athletically on the road awesome. to success. Uh, in the sports. But I want to say, sir, um, when we when I, we got the call, there's no way I was not coming. <laughs> so thank you so very much for giving us this and opportunity. And congratulations to you for yeah. an outstanding school that you're clearly building. Thank you so very much. Thank our you. theme this year is pop, pursuing our purpose and our potential. Congratulations. Thank you. One more time, CT Sweden. Well, I'm sure all of you are going to be running down CC's door this summer trying to get your children in there. <laughs> and you, rightfully, you have every reason to do so. Stay with us. Right after the break, listen, I could not wait till this moment. She's one of my, my favorite Bahamian artists. She is an outstanding vocalist. She is up next. Lady E is in the house. Erica Simonet is in the house. She's up next. Stay with us. It's been great hanging with you guys. Hit us up on our Twitter at YouthZone242 or Facebook at The Youth Zone. Or email us at TheYouthZone242 at ZenasPalmas.com. We want to hear from you. All right. Thank you for filling in for Benji. <laughs> thank you for filling in for Halle this, today. We really enjoyed having you guys. You're Finally welcome. on our show, our Artist of the Week is an outstanding Bahamian artist. She placed second in last year's Music Masters Carnival Song Competition. And of course, since her song has taken the airwaves by storm, she's been doing some major things. She's back in the competition this year with two songs, and we're expecting her to clean it up, aren't we? Yes. Please <laughs> welcome finally to the Youth Zone. Let's shake it up in here. Please welcome Lady E, Erica Simonet. See you next week, everybody. Hey. Big up to CC Sweden. What you saying, CC? Hey, bring the thing now. Feel that rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm. Feel that rhythm. Hey, feel that rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm. Feel that rhythm. Feel that rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm. Feel that rhythm. Feel that rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm. Hey. Feel that rhythm, bounce off the wall, forget about the reggae and the dance hall. Break and scrape, give me junk and the party people, this one is just for you. I want you to feel that rhythm, forget about the reggae and the dance hall. Break and scrape, give me junk and the party people, this one is just for you. I can control when I walk and roll, the music come take over me. Junk and the bed when you see me sweat, I don't care who said this to me. So tell the DJ, turn up the bass, me and my girls gonna wind up a ways to rum pump, I'm on the goat skin drum, it's time for us to have fun. Blow the horns to me, turn up the lights to me, hands in the air, give me, give me the rhythm. Ring the cowbells to me, hands in the air to me, like we don't care. Blaze up the rhythm, feel that rhythm, come on, feel that rhythm, feel that rhythm, feel that rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm, feel that rhythm, turn, feel that rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm, feel that rhythm, beat it, feel that rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm. How whining on time, Bay Street is mine, you see me rushing down the road. This second year carnival is here, we taking this party into beast mode. So tell the DJ, me and my girls gonna feel the rum pump, I'm on the ghost in rum, it's time for us to go fun. On the front line to me, boy lick the drums to me, hands in 
hands in the air, give me, give me the rhythm. Come blow your whistle for me, all through the night, see me. Hands in the air, give me, raise up the rhythm. Feel that rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm.